RC Building and 3D Printing Fanatics. My name is Jordan Visco, and today in this episode of RC Printer Build Factory, we're going to put together the original Open RC F1 car that you can build for yourself. We're going to do this one uh, without any modifications and all the basic integrated electronics as well. So you can see how it's all done for yourself. Follow along uh, so you can build your own. And you can turn all of this into this. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we have all the things you're going to need to build the OpenRC F1 car, including 3D printed parts, hardware like nuts and bolts and bearings, electronic components and tools. In the interest of keeping this video short, we're not going to go all over all of these things right now, but you can find out more about them at rcprinter.com. So the first thing you're going to need to do here is push together the chassis plates. Uh, just make sure when you push them together that both of the uh, sides have their countersunk holes facing downwards. The next thing we're going to do is build the rear axle. We're going to take the two rear axle holders and insert four M3 nuts as shown. Then we're going to insert two of the bearings, these are the larger ones, the 12 by 18 by 4 bearings. Then we're going to thread the rear axle in place. It's non-directional, so any orientation will work. Then we're going to work to mount the rear axle assembly to the chassis plate. So that's going to take four M3 by 8 screws. just like that. <clears throat> and then you can add your spur gear. It just slides right onto the right hand side. Uh, mine kept slipping off so I'm just going to remove it for the time being. Next we're going to build the front end. You're going to start by connecting the top plate to the front block. Um, you're going to insert two M3 nuts into the middle like that. And then you're going to connect the top plate with two countersunk M3 by 8 screws. Next, I like to connect the front wheel axles to the steering hubs or knuckles. Uh, that's going to take two M3 by 10 millimeter screws. Next, we can connect the knuckles to the top plate, and that is with two M3 by 8 countersunk screws. Make sure there's a bit of play uh, when you attach them so they can wiggle. And then we're going to go ahead and connect the bottom plate. And again, that's two M3 by 8 screws screwed right into the steering knuckles. And again, just make sure there's a little bit of wiggle room uh, in those. OK, now we're going to connect the front assembly to the chassis. Uh, make sure that the chassis is pointed uh, back towards the center of the vehicle. And you're going to uh, use two M3 by 12 millimeter screws, so a bit longer. And you're going to slide the nuts in the little holes in the side uh, of the main section of the um, front assembly. So I like to do them up a bit loose and then uh, make sure everything's straight and then tighten them down. Okay, now we're going to go over into the steering and we're going to do the servo saver. The lower part of the servo saver is the bigger section but the top part has the bigger knob sticking out. Uh, the top knob will face the front of the vehicle. So we're going to mount the two steering arms to the bottom side of the upper part of the servo saver knob with M3 uh, by 8 millimeter round head screw with one of those. And then we're going to put the servo saver together and we're going to slide it into place and we're going to connect it with two countersunk M3 by 8 millimeter screws, one from the top and one from the bottom. And again, we're going to tighten it gently uh, so that it can move freely. Then we're going to connect the steering arms to the outside knuckles, and that is with two M3 by 8 millimeter round head screws. And again, make sure there's free movement. Okay. 
next we're gonna attach our servo. The servo has a 3D printed bracket. The bracket has two mounting holes to tighten the servo itself down to the bracket, so make sure they're facing the left side of the vehicle. The servo also faces towards the left, and the wires are gonna be on the right. Attach the bracket with two M3 by 10 millimeter countersunk screws to the bottom of the vehicle. Then attach the servo itself to the bracket so it's nice and snug with two M2 by eight millimeter non-countersunk screws. Next, we're going to home our servo uh, to make sure it's in a neutral position. We do this by powering it up and connecting a controller. You do that by connecting your battery to your ESC to give it power, and then connect your ESC to your receiver in channel two to give the receiver power. Then you connect your servo to the receiver in channel one to give the servo power. And then you turn on your radio, or actually it's a good idea to turn on your radio first, and make sure that your steering is zeroed out. Next, we put the servo horn on the servo pointing straight up, but don't screw it down yet. And then we make a rod. The uh, original design calls for a 1.5 millimeter aluminum rod, but I don't have one on hand right now. So I'm just gonna go the MacGyver method and make one with a paper clip. So you straighten the paper clip, and then you bend the end 90 degrees, and then back 90 degrees again. So you create uh, kind of an S shape. Insert the end into the servo saver control arm and then make a bend at the servo horn at approximately the right location. It doesn't have to be perfect as we can fix it later with our trim on our controller. But it's a good idea to get it as close as possible. Then remove it and bend it twice uh, 90 degrees to make a step towards the servo and cut off any excess. Then put it into the servo saver, remove the servo horn, and attach it to the second hole from the top, and then reattach the servo horn. Next, screw down your servo horn with the appropriate screwdriver, likely a Phillips. It's important to note that when you do this, you want your steering to be straight. Um, you can see here that I didn't do that, and uh, now my steering is going to be a bit crooked later, and I'm going to have to go back and fix it. Next, we're going to throw the motor in. Um, you should have space for mounting M3 screws. I find M3 by 10 or M3 by 12 round head works the best, and I like to use washers um, as well for these so we can tighten the motor in uh, real snug. So you just slide it into its spot and screw it in, but don't tighten it quite yet. Um, and do make sure when you're mounting the motor that the wires are facing forward. Next, we're gonna add the pinion. The pinion is keyed and will only fit one way onto the motor's drive shaft. You want it almost all the way on, but not so that it's hitting the plastic. Then you line up your pinion with your spur gear, and then you tighten the, tighten the motor down. Add a bit of pressure to the motor as you're tightening it. You want it to be snug, but not so tight that it'll bind. Next, we're going to add the rear wing and rain light. So put M3 nuts in the pockets in the rain light uh, diffuser. It's a bit finicky, um, but the rain light goes inside the wing and then it all gets mounted to the rear chassis. Screw on the rear wing with the countersunk M3 by eight millimeter screws, as shown here. Now we're gonna assemble the body, and the first thing we need to do is put nuts in all the pockets. Uh, in the motor cover, there are six pockets, in the front section here, there are five pockets. There are two as well that go in the nose cone. Then we're gonna attach the motor cover to the main body. You're gonna use one M3 by eight countersunk up top, two M3 by 10 on the lower section. Then we're gonna attach the front section to the main body with two M3 by eight countersunk screws.
Then we're going to attach the nose cone. We're going to use one longer M3 by 10 millimeter screw. Next, we're gonna put the body on top, first sliding the rear section over the motor under the rear wing. Sometimes it helps to bend the rear wing back just slightly. Make sure your servo wire isn't stuck underneath the body like I have it, uh, and I'll have to just fix it in a few moments. Then attach the body to the chassis with M3 by eight screws. There's one at the back, one at the front, and four in the middle. Here I go fixing that servo wire before moving on. Then we're going to attach the front spoiler with one 3 by 12 millimeter screw, countersunk. Next we're going to quick fit the lid. So you're going to put the little nib in the back of the lid. It's actually a lock pin and it's going to hold the lid in place and slide that into position. Then we're going to add the turning vanes, the lid clips, and then we're going to pop in the rear view mirrors and the camera. Uh, with the camera, make sure the flat surface is towards the front. Beautiful. Now we're going to add the wheels. So push fit the tires onto the rims. Uh, they are non-directional, so anyway will work. So the front wheels are the ones that are not keyed and we're gonna tackle those first. Slide in your bearings, uh, one on each side of the front wheel. Put the first wheel on. The inside of the wheel is the side that has the greater uh, recess. Make sure the bearing slides all the way onto the axle. Then grab a wheel lock nut. It'll key into place and you can secure it with an M3 by eight millimeter countersunk screw. Don't tighten too much, you want it to spin freely. Then move on and do the same thing on the other side. Next, we're gonna do the rear wheels. They're pretty much the same thing as the front, except the wheels themselves are keyed so they turn with the axle. Slide them on and then secure with a wheel lock nut and M3 by eight millimeter countersunk screw. Because the rear wheels sit on the same axle, just hold the opposite side when you're tightening them. And you can tighten them snugly as they don't have to rotate on a bearing. Okay, great, so our model is done, but now we need to add in the rest of the electronics. Pop off the lid and grab your ESC. Connect your ESC to your motor by making sure the wires on both are in the same order. Or if you've got color-coded wires on your motor, make sure the colors match up. Put the ESC inside and connect your receiver in channel two. Connect your servo to the ESC in channel one. Then add the battery and smush everything into place. I'm not doing a great job of it here, so I'm gonna skip ahead to where I've done a better job of it. There we go. Okay, so we're all together now, and uh, we're just gonna test the steering out a bit here. Looking pretty good. And now we're gonna test out the drive by lifting it off the ground a little bit. Looks good. One last thing, it's not a hard requirement, but it's a good idea to lube your gears with super lube or any other PTFE lube. It's really easy to do, you just brush it on. Okay, let's get this thing out there for a test drive.
Looks pretty good. Okay, so thank you very much if you stuck through us with this uh, build guide. I hope you found it useful and you get many hours of fun out of your very own 3D printed OpenRC F1 car. As always, if you're looking for ideas uh, of cool RC projects to build, instructions, build guides, uh, kits, or parts, check us out at rcprinter.com.